In this final video, we're going to look at endorsements and recommendations on LinkedIn and how to get them. So it's really important if you can, you get people to recommend or endorse you. OK, but it's a gradual process. Don't expect to get loads right away. Don't go fishing for loads right away. People don't expect you as a fairly recent postgraduate to have loads of recommendations, but you should try to build them up as you develop your profile and as you develop your contacts. This is because they're big trust builders for potential employers. If you send a CV out, you can put all sorts of things on it and there's no guarantee that they're true. But it's very difficult to fake a LinkedIn endorsement or in particular a LinkedIn recommendation, okay? Because they come with someone's name attached and employers know that real people have to agree to give them. I reckon, in fact, it's quite important to have your endorsements and recommendations reasonably high up in your profile if you can. Okay, so when you're managing your profile blocks, try to put them fairly high up. Perhaps below, you know, your, your personal summary or your education. So for you, I think maybe the sequence could be summary, education, recommendations, endorsements. Now, it's important to remember that LinkedIn has two basic types of recommendation. One is very simple and it's just called an endorsement. When you visit a contact's profile page, at the top you'll see a dialog box like this one that I've got on Guy's page here, asking if you'll endorse him or her for particular skills. Now, if I click on any of these, the endorsement will go live on uh, Guy's profile with my photo and my name next to it. As it is, I'm just going to skip it. And you will see, whoops, let's get rid of that. If I go to my own profile, you can see my own endorsements. There we go. So quite a lot of them, I'm pleased to say. The only problem with endorsements is that, as you can probably kind of figure out, they're so easy to give that they don't really count for much. I could have just endorsed Guy for all of those things just then without a lot of knowledge of, of what he, you know, he, he's really done. They're still useful and people expect you to have them, but just because you have a lot of endorsements doesn't mean that people will take you seriously. Far more important are recommendations. This is where someone who has worked with you, hopefully, writes a few paragraphs about the experience and says good things about you. So a shortened version of this appears on your profile page and as you can see, uh, people can click and see the full thing. Not a lot of extra stuff to see there, but if you have a longer recommendation, you can, you can, um, you know, people can expand it. Um, the business of getting recommendations can be diplomatically tricky. What you could do is just offer to write recommendations for loads of your friends and have them do the same for you. And that might sound like a good strategy, but it'll be obvious to any sort of halfway savvy visitor to your page what you've done. It's far better to have a small number of recommendations from established people in your field rather than 20 or 30 from people who are obviously relatively junior. OK, I've not actually over the years, I've not been that good at collecting recommendations, but I, I don't really work in an industry where this sort of thing counts for much. If you're especially if you go into academia or a more competitive industry than mine, getting the right recommendations can make a really, really big difference. It's a good idea then to gently, if you like, solicit recommendations from senior people you've worked with. So that could be an academic supervisor, or a commercial partner or somewhere like that, rather than getting involved in that sort of dirty business of swapping recommendations with people. Now, good recommendations tend to be concrete and refer to specific projects that you've worked on. OK, so I hired Jeff to do such and such for me and he was fantastic is a good recommendation and much better than, you know, Jeff and I worked together on such and such a project and, you know, he seemed like a really nice guy. OK, so I've got a couple of good ones here. Uh, Rich Bundock, who runs quite a, quite a big IT company. Building a business is tough and you need people around you that can deliver the service you need at the right price and on time. But has consistently delivered an excellent service every time we've used him. He's highly recommended. Fine. OK. Um, this other one I quite like from uh, Michael Duma at IDEA, which is kind of a think tank in the States. Bill is quite bright. 
Thanks, Michael. Good of you to say. And our work with him as a writer, has, he's really helped crystallise what, what at the time was fairly nebulous, uh, clearly and with vision. So what Michael is doing there, albeit you know, in a slightly patronising and American kind of way, is saying something concrete about what we've done together. OK, so that's it. That's the last little video in the sequence. I hope it's been useful. If you have any questions, here are my various contact details. Here's my email address and my Twitter and, of course, my LinkedIn. Please do feel free, um, if you've got in touch with me, to add me on LinkedIn. If you do have any questions, ping them over. I'm more than happy to help. Sometimes, because I get a lot of emails from people, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm reasonably really busy, sometimes it will take me a little while to get back to you, but I will always try to do so. Okay, as I said, I hope it's been useful. There you go.